Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Financial Fluency. Today I'm here with Rachel Feldman. Hi, Rachel. How are you doing? Hey there. It is so good to be with you and your community. Can't wait for this podcast. Well, we've both been kind of excited about meeting up and we've had to reschedule a little. So it's great to connect and uh, see you face to face on Zoom anyways. <laughs> so Rachel, um, I understand you help business owners in the health and wellness realm to basically build their online business from scratch. Online, Is that right? Online and offline. I mean, okay. so I help health and wellness coaches in that whole sphere. So whether you're a life coach, fitness professional, I always say a lifestyle business um, okay. to understand strategically that you need to have an opt-in freebie. You need to have kind of that gateway program, that low cost program leading to a signature program. So whether that's online or offline, you still need that structure to have sustainability, especially in the day and age that we're in, in this mm -hmm. digital world. Um, so I do it and I help people from the ground up because that is exactly how I did it with very little money. Um, so that is really what I preach. You don't need to have tons in your back pocket to really build the business of your dreams. So what was the experience like for you when you built your business? Oh, what was uh, your business? <laughs> so I came from commercial real estate, um, loved that business. And from my own health issues, having an autoimmune and um, I would say just always being told like, take this one supplement or do this one protocol, this fixed everyone. It was never the case for me. And okay. I remember being in commercial real estate, coming out of this acupuncturist office actually and saying, you know, one day I'm going to be, I didn't even know the word health coach. I was like, one day I'm going to do something that is going to help people like me know that we're not just all this like one size fits all. Like we're not just a medical book that you can open or, you know, and, and I just knew that things had happened to me health wise for a reason. I didn't know what that was going to turn out to be. So after my second child, I decided to leave commercial real estate, which I loved, um, and pursue being a health coach. And this is where it gets really good, <laughs> which is that we lost everything. My husband lost his entire business, all our savings, everything um, with the crash of the stock market. And I had a decision to go back to commercial real estate and support us or to pursue my dream as a health coach. And I said, you know what? I don't know how I'm gonna start a business, but I'm gonna start it. Um, back then, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm like, back then, no one needed a website. I mean, I worked for a huge company um, in commercial real estate. We had business cards. I mean, if that, you were, so the digital world that we live in today is so different. And so when I started this business, um, I had to have a website. I had to understand my message. I had to understand all these things. And so it wasn't easy. Um, but I started building that business with a crappy website, crappy videos. Um, I was scared to speak in public. So I started using YouTube. Little did I know I was shooting videos to build my search engine optimization. And so I moved from Philly where I knew everyone to Florida where I knew not a soul and people were contacting me and finding me. And I would say, how did you find me? And they said, oh, I was watching one of your videos. So I always teach and preach the fact that with as many free tools, Google Plus and um, YouTube videos or Vimeo, I mean, Facebook, Facebook Live, all of these didn't happen, didn't exist back then. But you can build a business. I mean, you have Wix, you have Weebly, you have Squarespace, you have free websites <laughs> that are gorgeous. So you don't need to spend, you know, let's say 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 to build a business. You could literally be doing that and build your, the business of your dreams with little to no money in really your back pocket. I think that sounds like the dream that so many people want. Yeah. And so, and, well, for yeah, someone yeah. who's and it's like, okay, that all sounds good. I can put up a website mm -hmm. and I've recorded a few videos, maybe, maybe I made a YouTube mm -hmm. channel, but where are all the people? 
So that is where we really get into what they call being niche specific. And it isn't the way that it used to be where you could just write down like Jane feels or Sally is experiencing. We are in a world where there's so much noise. We're on fake people are on Facebook, you know, just even busy in life. You know, most people are working in two jobs or they're out of the home and they come home and kids are doing homework at seven o'clock. I mean, things are busy. And so when you really sit down and think about your business, it isn't just about throwing up a website or hiring somebody for a great copywriting. You really need to sit back and think about your own story. What happened to you? What did you learn from what happened to you? And what system can you share with somebody else? So people who make it in their business, there are a few key factors. One is, yes, the message that you actually have from what does your niche need to hear? What problem are you solving? And how do you actually express that in a non-douchey, non-salesy, sleazy way? So somebody says, wow, I really identify with the problem that this person had. So when I had ulcerative colitis, I started sharing about how, you know, just, frustrating it was that I, nobody was telling me like, this is how they would just say, stop eating chocolate, stop drinking coffee. And I was like, yeah, I can read that in any book. What, 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 what can I do other than that? So it's really about then stepping into a solution online or offline and messaging to that person why they should be either coming to your site, why they should follow you, why they do want to come to a webinar, because you are going to provide them with A, B, and C, which could result in X, Y, and Z. So where all the people is, you know, it's usually, people are everywhere. But if somebody's not clicking to your site or not coming, so that you're not speaking their language, or you think you're speaking their language because you think that you're following the typical marketing mojo, but maybe you're not being personal enough. Maybe you're not really sharing your vulnerability. And in today's world, that is, that is what people identify with. I can't tell you how many times people would say, you know, you shared your story and like, I really identified with this or that. So for somebody who's just starting out and they're like, I don't know where to start, I always say, first, think about your story. Write that down. That might even take you three, four hours. And it's important for you to do that exercise. Go back to it. Sit down with a friend or if you do have a coach or sit down with your partner and say, I'm going to read you this. I need you to tell me if you would hire me after this. Then ask five friends. I need you to sit down and I need you to tell me if you got pieces of this story that would make you want to reach out to me and hire me for what I'm sharing in this story. And the same goes for your work with me page. And the same goes for a social media post. Anywhere that you're sharing what you do has to have somebody say, I have to reach out to this person because they're, they're speaking my language. Hmm. So tell us your story. Let's start with your story. So my story is that I had what was, you know, I would say like the typical rashes, stomach aches, hives as a kid. And at 18, that turned into, well, 14, I had an ulcer. And then by 18, I had asthma and all these, then that just trickled into like health issues galore. I had asthma where I was on life support. I had then heavy metals. And the funny thing is, um, all along, I looked fine. And this is what I hear from people. I swam competitively my whole life. I was always going to the gym. And I remember being in commercial real estate saying, something was wrong. Like, I remember actually saying to my mom, like, I actually feel like I'm dying. Like, I don't know what's going on. And... So, you know, my whole story, I always say like our painful moments, the times that we feel broken are actually the, what we have to turn in into a product. And I know that, you know, so if you're sitting there thinking, God, that sounds crazy, but that is the truth. When you think about those painful moments in your life, that really becomes your story. And we all have different stories. We've all gone through a myriad of great things not so great or maybe awful things in our life. So you really have to pick what 
what you want to focus on. You know, that was one. One was my health, you know. The next was, you know, us losing everything in the stock market. And both fed into the businesses that I had. I became a health coach, a very successful one. Then I started working with coaches who had a tough time creating successful businesses. And they were like, what did you do? And so that fed into teaching other coaches how to have successful businesses based on your story, based on, and based on sometimes burning that typical, like, how do I build a business and really thinking and humanizing it? What does this person need to hear from me and get out of this? I'm so scared to put a post. What are people going to think? It's like, that's just got to let it go. And so my story was a story of, yes, you know, perfectionism and, you know, thinking that I needed to have everything perfect, but the blessing of losing everything is I couldn't afford somebody to make a site great. It looked like crap. I couldn't afford an assistant. I did everything myself. And that brought empowerment to me, um, which even though I always appeared very powerful to people and strong, um, I didn't always feel that inside. I'm by nature an introvert, which clearly doesn't appear on Facebook or anywhere. But that was also why I chose that medium because I was nervous to go to social events. I was nervous. And so for me, building a business was really about not comparing myself, which that was a great lesson that I learned through building a business, how to not do that, but how to really find what worked for me in business. And I think that's, if, if anyone can hear that, it's like when, when nobody is hiring you, sometimes you have to step back and say, you know what, I really have to find what works for me. So if nobody is clicking on a strategy session or buying your product or, um, you know, you don't have to throw out the baby in the bathwater. You just often have to sit back and say, what part of this isn't clear to the person of the benefit they could get. Like, what am I not expressing that they aren't getting or what, or do they not know me enough? Am I not, you know, have they, do they not know my story? Hmm. That's interesting. I like that. So go with your story and then have five people read it or listen to it. See mm -hmm. if they would hire you. Um, if things aren't working, step back and try to see where either you're not telling your story, not being clear, maybe people don't understand what the benefits, the offering that you have. Um, what else do you help people with? So it's building what I call the overall business sales funnel. So we okay. think we hear sales funnel all the time and we immediately think, oh yeah, that annoying seven email series that I got after I opted in just for this great, you know, this great gift. Mm -hmm. But you have to have different entry points for different people. I mean, think of us. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different psychological need. Some people are the people who love facts. Some people are you know, the person who's moving so quick, they're just like, oh, that looks cool. Oh yeah, that really would, you know, work for me. And they're like going on their phone and everyone needs a different message. And that's why when I say like the niche, you might have four niches. Well, you know what? You better have about 35 messages because everyone gets pulled. Some people get pulled by heart. Some people get pulled by the physical need. So some people it's emotional, some people it's physical. And some people it's a combination of both. So I always teach, have five to 15 different entry points. That could be an opt-in freebie. That could be an audio. That could be um, a giveaway. That could be a raffle. It could be a challenge. I mean, it's endless online or offline, but you need about 15 because if you're just putting all your eggs in one basket, basket's not going to fill up. Not going to fill up when there's a 5% conversion rate. So if you're hoping that you're going to have this thriving, awesome business, and trust me, I made 13000 in year one, 27 in year two. I was pretty much paying for Montessori school, and I support my family still to this day financially. It's when I figured out that I needed a system, multiple opt-in freebies, and then I needed a low-cost gateway program. So someone comes into your funnel, and then they may not get to... 
They don't know you. They just downloaded one thing. Mm -hmm. So Gary Vaynerchuk talks about jab, 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 right hook. Jab, jab is information, information, get to know me, nurture me, nurture me. And so that low cost gateway program is somebody like, okay, so this is 67 or 47 or 87. Okay, so it's less than the cost of a massage. I'm going to try this out because I've downloaded about eight cool things from this person and I want to get to know, I mean, it seems pretty good. Gateway program. They, it's the gateway, the open door to the rest of your really significant offerings, whether that's one-on-one -on -one or it's your next online program, or maybe it's VIP or retreat. So you're always thinking about where are they being funneled into and why? So that your opt-in freebies also lead them down a journey because some people never want to work one-on-one. -on -one. I call them groupies. They only want to be in a group. They thrive off of, it's like, it's like people who run marathons and races. That excitement of being in a group is unbelievable. And then the other person, the psychological one-on-one -on -one person, feels overwhelmed in a group. They only want one-on-one. -on -one. So really thinking about the experience of the person, that's what makes a great business owner. That's what makes a successful business owner, somebody who thinks about their client customer experience and feeding them different opportunities that they may want or that, I mean, we assume, we make an assumption, okay, well, if I lead them down this path and they buy this 67, they will either come to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or they're going to buy this next group program that is $897 because they have fallen in love and become a raving fan. So how does this look like? What does this look like in your system? How do you map this out? How do you have 15 different entry points? Yeah. And what system do you use? I'm curious. So that's a great point. I mean, that's a great question. In the beginning, I was with MailChimp. Um, so I just would get a handout. And again, this also goes back to psychology checklist handouts everyone why do we see them more right now in 2017 and 16 busy 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 so people are just like oh give me the checklist and the handout before we saw a lot of opt-in freebies that were like 25 pages all the you know audio stuff like that so again you have to you have to have different ones because different people are attracted to different things so for me what i did in mailchimp is I just had about 15 different, I call them opportunities, opt-in freebies. Um, one was on the front of my site that had a nice landing page. One was on a blog that had a nice landing page. The rest of them <laughs> were just in a form in MailChimp and they were being fed into blogs. P.S. Download this. If you love this blog, P.S. They were under social media posts. They were on Pinterest. They were ever, I still today, some of them be like, the link is broken. I'm like, oh my God, that was like from five years ago. That is the power of the, you know, the internet world. So you're thinking about 15 different ones. Again, don't have a heart attack right now. Compartmentalize. I'm a busy mom. I have two kids under the age of 10. So think, okay, let me start with one or two. But an entry point can also be if you, want to shoot a class, say you master, know how to master Facebook ads. Great. Shoot a master class on how to do that. That's an opt-in freebie. Give a cheat sheet. What is the next email going to be? The follow up. Hey, do you want a strategy session? I can really help you. Three days later, the follow up. Hey, have you seen my do it yourself? Learn how to Facebook master class. So then you have your gateway program. And how do you figure this out? Don't just do what every other business owner makes a mistake. They go right in to the computer. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make so much money. No, no, no. Your story, your niche, your sub niche. What do they want? Go into a group that knows you and pull them. Hey guys, I'm thinking about putting together a killer program. Of course. I want to know out of these four, what would be helpful for you? You might have one or two gateway programs even. Some people have two gateway programs and one do-it-yourself. Why? 
feeding into the different psychological needs of people and humans, you know, our needs. And then you think about your signature program. This might be what defines you, like really what you're about, the program you've dreamed about. And sometimes we don't write those until about five, six years even to our business because we've envisioned it always, but that's like the cream of the crop. That is the vision that you've had, but that is really where you're taking them, quote unquote, through an entire system. Some people you'll see this in memberships. Some people you'll see this in longer nine month programs. Or some people will do this with intensive retreats. Or some people will do this in eight weeks but you're taking them through, I believe if you go through, you know, these steps, these five or six pillars, you're going to have this result. And that's really how you back into what do I want to offer? So you can simplify it again for the, for the new person starting out, you might start with one opt-in freebie and think about one offering. And that could be a gateway, you know, okay, how do I get myself started? Or that could be a workshop. I always say when I'm teaching, okay, someone will say, I'm not making any money. I say, do you know 10 people, <laughs> 10 people who would love to be with you for two hours online and offline, and you could charge $35. Would it be nice to make $350 an hour when you're telling me you're making zero? And they say, yeah. I'm like, could you think of one <laughs> talent that you have that you can do that? So we have to think outside the box in these days. We have to be different because there is so much traffic and there is so much noise. So I always say it is also stepping back and saying, I don't have to be a master of all trades, but where do I really shine? What would be appealing? And then market that. Hmm. How did you decide to make the shift from being a direct health and wellness coach yourself to helping others? When did that happen? That was a year ago, and it was a really difficult decision um, because I became a health coach for, I mean, I know my why is right on, right in front of my desk um, to help people who were just like me. And so having that decision, you know, really was not easy, but doing both, I had to sit there and say, okay, there's me in the middle. And I'm feeling adrenal fatigued because I'm trying to do two things at once and serve two communities and give them both opt-in freebies and serve two free groups and be on, like, it was just pulling me in too many directions. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that I feel like I gave it up. I feel like it was really about looking at balance as a woman and as a mom and asking myself, okay, where right now do I feel like I'm called to work? And that, that was really where I felt. And it doesn't mean that I won't go back. Um, mm -hmm. But at that point, I had to make a decision. I had to say, you know. Well, and it sounds like the health coaches that you're helping are like you too when you started out as a health coach. Yeah. So, and, so you, you, know, you don't have you know, the same um, health issues you do exactly when you became a health coach you ran into the same problems that they're probably running into right now. And I, you know, I think that's what, when I was saying about your story that you go through, um, I see too many entrepreneurs who try to start a business um, and they're either jumping on the bandwagon of somebody else who is really successful in that area, or they are interested. They're like, I love doing this, but it doesn't mean that you're a master of that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that, that that's marketable. That's the next part of when you said, well, what if people aren't making money and nobody's hiring them? That's mm -hmm. the second part you have to say, is this marketable what I want to be selling or what I'm promoting? Um, and so for me, it was really sharing with people. I don't try to say, look, you know, I can do, like I'm a master of MailChimp, but I learned it because didn't have anyone else to do it for me. So everything that I've ever done in my business has been teaching somebody, this is what worked for me. So now I'm going to teach you my system. And if it didn't work for you, I'm going to teach you how to think outside the box because how you run your business or the foods that you choose to eat 
or what you choose to do in your life has to feel in alignment. And so it's bringing somebody back also to an intuitive state, which is something we usually are robbed of at a pretty young age. Mm. So coaching for me was always saying to somebody, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not supposed to sit here and tell you what to do because that's what was told to me and it didn't work. It's teaching you, you know, you actually do have the power and you intuitively actually know what to do. You just forgot. And so you just need someone to show you the way. And it's the same in business. There's not this right or wrong, like do this and you will make X amount of money. I hate those Facebook ads and those emails that make me want to puke. It's mm-hmm. actually saying to somebody, look inside yourself and see what calls to you. And then you're going to have to tackle the other part, which usually is what separates the successful people to the not is, do you believe in yourself? And can you tackle the money issues that come along with you charging your worth with the comparison, with the fear is anyone going to buy it? And then that energy gets put out into the world. So business coaching to me, isn't just this, here's an Excel spreadsheet and let's do a sticky note challenge, you know, or here's like a perfect sales funnel, follow it and steal this. Or, you know, here's an email sequence written by like the top person and that cost me $3,000. It doesn't just, if that was the case, everyone would make money. There would be one way to do business, but that's not it. It's intuitive. It has to come from soul. It, and, and when it doesn't, I call it the one hit wonder. Because someone comes in, they make a crap load of money. You'll see like, I made th- six figures on this launch, you know, join me and I'm going to teach you, pay me 40,000 for, you know, six months to be with me. It's not about that. It's about, I'm going to teach you to believe in yourself. I'm going to teach you to really feel what this person on the other end needs to hear from you. Because if you were really in that place, remember that pain. And if it wasn't a painful moment, remember why you got into this business. You just one day wake up and say, I'm going to do this. We all are called to a profession for a reason. And if you can tap into that really deep why, that sales funnel will come to you and you, and you do. You've got to lock yourself into a room, in a room with a few whiteboards and a journal and give yourself quiet time. And I'm not a quiet person. I'm Jewish. I'm under five foot. I'm an Aries. I'm from Philly. Quiet does not exist in this body. But with our business or with change or, or with needing, like or tapping into that intuitive business soul marketing, you do have to give yourself quiet time so you can analyze what's working and what isn't and listen to, wow, you know, this people, people really love this one post on weight loss. I'm not a weight loss coach, but maybe that is what people want right now and be willing to be flexible to feed into what people want instead of just what we want. That's a great business owner. And that is why I've been successful. Mm. I think it's a really good point too, to think of people and specific people too, because online business, I feel like sometimes people can move so far away from that, looking at, you know, pixels and conversion rates and all of those things, you know, and, uh, and even like when you said the 5% conversion, I was like 5%, I thought it was one and a half to 2% conversion, you know, cause that's what I've read in these different places. And so when I get a conversion rate, that's one or 2%, I think, okay, that's pretty good in- industry standard. That's what I can expect from my list size, blah, blah, blah. But it completely takes you away from the actual people who are responding emotionally or physically or, you know. You know what's funny? Still to this day, one year ago was the first time I did Facebook ads. That was it. One year ago, everything else was built because I was on Facebook. I had great opt-in freebies. So that's why I tell people like, you know, you don't have to do it like everyone else. You know, there is the FOMO, like the fear of missing out, like, oh my God, but I see this person doing this. I didn't spend money on Facebook ads. Um, You know, the second part is I don't look at pixels. I don't look at conversion rates. I know my numbers, but I am so close to the people who buy from me that I ask them every day, what do you guys want from me? If I'm creating a program, because I create copyright free, done free programs, And we put out two new ones every season. So I ask them, 
what do you guys need in your business? And I know, and I had a virtual assistant tell me a long time ago, the, the less accessible you are, the more people are going to want to hire you. And I thought, wow, that I would never be that because not only are these coaches telling me what they need, but I remember that. And I was alone and I was scared to build my business and I didn't know what was going on. And so my mission has always been to be accessible. Somebody will even write me when I write back in an email. I'm like, whoa, that was quick. And I write back and say, what, it should be nothing else but that. And so I think we often get too far away from the very people we're trying to serve. And then we don't even know who we're serving anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's a great point. Like, and I think, you know, that to me is what Gary Vaynerchuk brought to the online space is he brought back this, wow, here's this powerhouse guy making so much money. And he's literally in, in there engaging on a Facebook live. Hey, Brian. Hey, Gary. You know, he's like talking to people. And I think it blew people's minds. Like, wow, what's this about? But that's where we, we lost that. And so going back into this old school way of really engaging with your people, if you engage with people and you're always there, if I was selling a pencil or a pen today, someone would be like, oh, Rachel's buying a selling pen. It's got to be great. She, as in, I know she invested in it. I know she, I know it's the right pen. You know why? Because I give great programs to coaches and, you know, yeah, do a, some maybe feel like it's not a right fit. I can't please everyone, but they know that I am there for them every day. And the same was for the clients that I served. And if that comes first before the numbers, let me tell you, the numbers will be up here. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I think a lot of times looking at things like the pixels and the conversion rate is people kind of like grasping for these straws, trying to figure out how do I... How do I do this, especially if they don't yet have a platform and an audience and they don't feel like they have those people to get the information from. So if someone does not yet know their audience themselves, if they don't have, um, you know, a group of people in a Facebook group that are already there for them, for them to talk to, or if they, you know, they don't have the clients that you have to say, what do you need from me? What, how do you get them started? So that goes back to the early days and I remember them oh so well. Um, I reached out to my girlfriends and I was mm -hmm. like, what do you guys need? But, but even before that, it goes back to what I was saying about my story. I knew I mm -hmm. had digestive issues. I knew I had an autoimmune. I knew I was told I would never get pregnant. I knew I had, you know, I knew there was like a laundry list of issues that I had experienced. Mm -hmm. So I knew I, that was, that was what I was going to teach. And then it led in for me after going through school saying, why do we have all this? Why do we have the rise of spectrum? Why do we have the rise of, you know, my son showing up intolerant to gluten on a test at 18 months when he had never even consumed it? Why, why do we have all this? And that led me to go to school for detoxification, four different schools, because I was like, this has to be what we're breathing outside, stress, EMF waves, all this different stuff. And so often the very people that we are meant to serve, if we don't even know who they are, is goes back to our own experiences. You ask me like, what is my story? Well, that would take a 24 hour or maybe in seven day long podcast. Um, so I try to shorten it a little because um, again, I'm known to talk. Mini series. <laughs> yeah, you have to know your story because, mm -hmm. and then you have to test it. You know, so as I started to, when I broke that six figure, went from the 27 is when I actually put out a program because I realized, wow, if I really shared this system that worked for me, the elimination diet, detoxification, cleansing, spiritual cleansing, emotional cleansing, everything, and put that into a program to serve people one-on-one, -on -one, but also to serve the people who couldn't afford me one-on-one, -on -one, that's when it changed. And so if you don't know who your, who your audience is or who you have to look at your own story though, because I wouldn't come out and be like, Hey, I'm going to coach people who have diabetes. That was, that's not in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. 
So I think, you know, we really have to look at what have we gone through? So could I coach people who worked in corporate setting and were stressed and overworked and had to be in the office by, you know, before any other guy, because that's the glass ceiling. Yes. I could coach women like that. I, so you had, there's always a backstory. Tony Robbins always says, we have multiple backstories. What story is running your day? It's not just what story is running your day. What story is going to be part of your business? Is it what story? And, and note that that story is going to change as you change. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like have an audience. From health so, to business coaching, the health coaches. So, and even in health coaching, my niche changed. So, mm-hmm. you know, understanding that if you don't have an audience, that's where you test it. You know, you might not have people, Facebook algorithms have changed or Facebook business page doesn't get the, the traffic that it used to. But then you go offline, you go and you meet people in your backyard. So, you know, I didn't know anyone here, but I went into health food stores. I went into the places that were applicable to my niche and handed out my business cards and went in there consistently over and over. And if you're on the online space, you find one or two groups where they start to get to know you and you start to find out what is trending. You look at the trends, just like a really smart CEO and you see what do people need? You just listen. A great business owner just listens. You know, so I think, I mean, yes. Do I think some people have a real trouble in this area? I always say, if, if that is really a tough time, find a coach or find a buddy, you know, that you can collaborate with and sit down and commit twice a week we're meeting for two hours or once a week we're meeting for two hours. Um, mm-hmm. But keep testing. Keep going, even if it's Facebook personal page. Hey, you know, I'm starting a business, really excited. Um, I would love some feedback. Is anyone here? Would anyone, you know, powwow with me on a Zoom, you know, five people, and I'll give you a present. I mean, there's so many ways to, that's why when I think we're not powerless, we just have to think outside the box sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. And build up the confidence to go have those conversations and do those things. I, I think sometimes, especially for introverts, that those things are hard. But I do feel like our technology now, these computers and all the stuff they can do, gives us a lot more options to try those things out than we used to have. But I think we also have to recognize, and this is the part that I was talking about, the mindset. Mm-hmm. There will always be fear. Adele mm-hmm. is one of my favorite singers. Sing, I mean, soul. And I remember listening to her and she said, sometimes I think I'm going to throw up right before I go out on stage. And even the last time that I saw her go out on stage after she took a break, she said she was crying and everyone was clapping after she stopped singing. She said something, I can't do her fabulous voice, but she said, oh, I'm so happy you love this because I thought maybe you wouldn't like me anymore. It was something to that effect. Like, you know, anyone who plays bit, Anybody who steps out of their comfort zone, there's going to be a fear. Any mm-hmm. person who I ever asked for an interview who was like big or anytime I went and spoke in front of the first group, even five people, my heart, I mean, I was sweating. I was like, I hope nobody comes near me. <laughs> um, I was like, guess I should have used deodorant on this day. Um, there's going to be that. And I think that's the thing as business owners, we think, oh, okay, well, I'll put the website together. Sometimes we hide behind that. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. Out of, I would say maybe the biggest takeaway from this podcast is you can build a leak-free sales funnel you know, from your business. We can all be doers, but you do have to believe in what you're doing because people buy a journey. People buy you then they buy your service. People buy, fall in love with who you are. And if you can show up wherever you are, and if you need to exercise that part, you need to look at it as like going to the gym. You don't just go in and able to drop and do 20 push push-ups. You might have to go in and start and start at two and then be like, oh my God, that hurt. So it's getting over the fact that you know, this will be easy. It's like, no, it's okay to say it's hard and it's uncomfortable. And 
you know, and that maybe you might have a little panic attack and feel like you're going to throw up and, and go to the bathroom multiple times in a day more than you ever anticipated. And you know what? Then it will get to be easy. And then you'll put that in your cash register. So when you do go to play big at the next time, it doesn't feel like you're being choked. You're like, oh, I remember this. Okay. Feel a little nerves, but like <laughs> chatter. <laughs> it's just like being a new mom. You know, if anyone's listening who it's like, you have your first child and you're like, okay, I read every book, but this is nothing like the book. And it's just, then you get used to knowing that you're going to parent your own way. That's business. Yeah. Yep. That's true. I definitely found parenthood to be nothing like, I thought it would <laughs> nothing be. like the books. <laughs> no, no. But, um, but this was a fantastic interview and we're coming up to time. So I think we'll wrap it up, but thank you so much for all of that. I feel like you gave us a whole lot of tips and uh, in the show notes, we will definitely line them out for you. And if you want to get in touch with Rachel to find out more about her business and how she can help you, is it rachelfeldman.com? Is that right? So it's rachelafeldman.com. That is my site. If you okay. are interested in done free programs, they're copyright free, white label. You can go to www.healthcoachbiz.rachelswellness. Um, if you have questions, shoot me a Facebook message. I love that other folder. Um, Instagram is Rachel Joy Feldman, all that stuff. So yeah, smoke signals. I will, I will see them. I always forget to check that other folder. And then every oh, now I, I then, that. I mean, it's it. mostly things I don't want to look at, but every now and then I'll be like, Oh, this person, I totally should have written them back. So that's a good reminder. I'll go check my other folder. Um, well, and thank you so much, Rachel. This was a great conversation. And I've taken quite a few notes myself on some things because while I do have a funnel of sorts, I pretty much did it mainly because people told me I had to have a funnel and I needed to do list building. And I somewhat, with some amount of resistance, put a couple of things into place. The one I enjoyed the most, though, was just, um, it was seven videos where I just recorded seven videos and talked. And I found that so much easier for me than writing all these things out and trying to figure out what went next and what went next. It was just like, oh, and then there's the next video and there's the next video. And that, that felt easier. It was like one and a half minute videos each. Yeah. And then take that and think, okay, so if I'm giving them their seven, these seven videos, like what could be that initial video that's going to teach them? Like, what am I teaching them? And then the follow-up is, hey, if you really love these seven videos, check this out, or this is how I can help you. And think of, you know, more ones that do bring you pleasure because they should, they should show your brilliance. You know, they should show where you shine. Yeah. All the business structures and then figuring out how they work in my, um, I switched from MailChimp to active campaign. And to be honest, I don't know how to use active campaign. Thank God Holly yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. So trying to figure out how to like fit those things together. That's one of my weaknesses. I do not shine at the tech side of things. So no. like, why can't I get the image to show up in sometimes, the newsletter? And that's the thing for anyone listening. Sometimes we just have to outsource those things. Like, <laughs> If you're finding yourself and you're like pulling out your hair over something and it's, it's draining you, um, I always say, then cut out the massage or cut out like something that maybe you do that really does, even though it's great for you, um, that you could go and hire a virtual assistant to do. Because if you're walking around going, oh, <laughs> you're not going to sell anyway or help people or anything. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I do know a lot of people where that ends up being a stopping point mm -hmm. and they, it delays them getting something out there for ages. And if anyone wants a starter VA, I love Fancy Hands. I'll throw a link in for Fancy yeah, Hands. Yeah. It's, you don't get a dedicated VA. It's pay per task. Um, but you can get tasks done. Like they can go. Hire into, my mom is also great. Yes, yes. Because they hire women who are stay at home moms. And uh, yeah, I think that's fantastic too. That's pretty much how so many of the women I know started our journeys was uh, yeah. like I have two special needs kids and I had very difficult high risk pregnancies. And that's when everything changed for me was um, yeah. I couldn't get into the office anymore. So yeah. Yeah. So hire my mom's awesome. So thank you so much, Rachel. And if you guys want to go find Rachel, please do. We'll put links in the show notes so you can find her. And um, I can't wait to learn more. I think I'm going to go check out some of your 15 <laughs> entry, all your freebies, see what I can find. <laughs> there are a lot. <laughs> I'm going to go count them. <laughs> some aren't even, like I said, though, guys, some aren't even on the site. 
Okay. Okay. Some are well. floating around. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. But that's given me some food for thought for sure, because uh, I don't really think to put all that many other feelers out there besides my main one. But um, yeah. yeah. Well, and thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. It was good to be with you guys. Take it easy. Bye.